On June 7th, Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference will kick off. Like all WWDCs, we'll get our first glimpse at major software updates to iOS, iPadOS, macOS, and maybe even more at this event. In this video, we'll cover all the software and hardware that may be announced in WWDC 2021. First held in 1983 by Apple, the Worldwide Developers Conference is an information technology conference held every year by Apple. The event mainly focuses on software such as iOS and macOS. Like last year, the event will be entirely online this year. While WWDC primarily focuses on software, Apple has made hardware announcements in the past, the iMac Pro in 2017 and the Mac Pro in 2019. We can expect significant developments in software, but what has everyone really excited is the major hardware announcements that may be announced. Even though there has been very little information regarding iOS 15, we expect it to be one of the most significant announcements at WWDC 2021. iOS 15 will bring updates and improvements for the iPhone, like Siri and Maps, but beyond that, it's still unclear. While iOS 14 introduced the app library and home screen widgets, users are hoping iOS 15 will bring even more upgrades or focus more on improving existing features. Although iOS 15 is almost certain to be announced at WWDC 2021, with an official release in September, the developer beta will likely be available as soon as it's announced, followed by a public beta. Some people have gotten a glimpse at iOS 15 and suggest that Apple is readying a major revamp of its mobile software that will include an upgrade to how users handle notifications, a redesigned home screen, an updated lock screen, and additional privacy protections for its flagship devices. Continuing Apple's central theme of privacy, Apple could be enhancing users' privacy and security, placing Apple on more of a collision course with data harvesting companies like Facebook and Google but a good thing for consumers as data breaches become more prevalent. As Bloomberg reported last Thursday, Apple is working on enhancing iMessage to make it more competitive with Facebook's messaging products, including WhatsApp, which would include more robust social networking features. It's possible that iOS 15 will introduce a new rule which requires Facebook and other companies to ask for your consent before tracking your online activities. Apple will probably position iMessage's new social features as a way to share photos, videos, and updates privately with close family and friends. Last month, Apple introduced a new iPad Pro with the same M1 chip found in the latest Macs. And early benchmark results indicate that the M1 iPad Pro is over 50% faster than previous generations. iOS apps don't have complete access to Apple's iPad's RAM, which means apps don't use the entire amount as of yet. However, it's probably pretty obvious why those reasons are. Apps made for iPadOS are typically not large or complex like the full-fledged apps we see on the macOS. These apps require less RAM, so iPadOS in its current form gives each of them approximately 5 gigs of RAM each. With the M1 chip and increased 8 and 16 gigs of RAM, it leads users to believe something big is coming to iPadOS this Monday. Could we finally see Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, Xcode, and other apps in their full form make its way to the iPad. A feature users have been hoping Apple offers is the option to provide different tablet profiles since tablets can be shared among family members. This feature is available on Amazon and Samsung tablets, and Apple provides it to schools. It would give great support for families such as parents with children who constantly swap devices back and forth, for example. Another big topic is multitasking, a capability iPad has slowly gained. Some apps such as Instagram never got full iPad support. Therefore, they unintentionally flipped the screen to portrait orientation when launched, even if they're locked in landscape. The simplest option would be to simply launch Instagram inside Slide Overview, a phone screen size pop-up. This way, such apps will look just as intended and won't disrupt your workflow by changing the screen orientation. As of right now, Apple doesn't allow non-optimized apps to open this way or in split view or perhaps a free-flowing interface similar to macOS or Samsung DeX that will enable users to open up multiple apps and place them wherever they want. With more performance than you can handle, the new iPad Pro has a lot to offer. 
iPadOS fills in a significant piece of the iPad story. The missing piece shows the iPad Pro and other iPod models to take advantage of that power. The iPad Pro is equipped with the M1 chip, so some people want Mac OS-like interface. But we think just an improved iPad OS would be best as users could just opt for a MacBook Air if more functionality is what they're after. Support for external displays is another area where we could see some improvement. Its output capabilities have increased since the tablet features a Thunderbolt port. The iPads could be extended and not merely mirrored. Apple could also replace those black bars that appear on the left and right side of your monitor. Sure, we'll be waiting until September for iPad OS 15 to arrive, but still, it's a step in the right direction. Recently, we've seen accessibility play a big role in Apple's development. Eye tracking is an option we could see at the event, allowing users to control iPad OS with their eyes. Apple Watch is still under wraps, except for what the company has already confirmed about watchOS. With the next watchOS update, assistive touch will make its way to the device. People will be able to control their Apple Watches just by clenching their fists and pinching with their fingertips. It's already an incredible concept, but not quite as impressive as how Apple managed it. The watch will integrate its motion sensors, heart rate monitor, and machine learning techniques to detect movements within the wearer's muscles to activate certain functions on the watch. Assistive touch is part of Apple's efforts to increase accessibility, and this could be a real game changer for people who have only one hand. Still, I wouldn't be surprised if it impacted other people as well. In addition to new watch faces, we can expect to see a bunch of other changes as well, but that's about it in terms of firm information at the moment. Besides that, there's little more we know about watchOS 8 and hope to learn more soon. As for tvOS, it seems like Apple TV 4K was launched relatively quickly and did offer some good features. While both the new color calibration and Siri Remote were excellent, Apple posted an employment posting in the days leading up to WDC that mentioned HomeOS. However, HomeOS is not yet an operating system, although the name has since been changed to HomePod and tvOS on the job listing. It does seem to indicate that Apple is perhaps planning to rename tvOS to HomeOS, since both Apple TV and the HomePod run a version of tvOS. Apple made an announcement a couple of weeks ago that they would change music forever with Apple Lossless, an upgraded version of Apple Music with lossless quality. The news that Apple would be offering a lossless music service free of charge to Apple Music customers has received a lot of attention. Unfortunately, because of Bluetooth limitations, it won't work with any of Apple's AirPods and even the AirPods Max. However, users have speculated that Apple is working on an update that would allow AirPods to work with AirPlay, making them the first wireless headphones that can stream lossless audio. Now let's get into the possible fun announcements we could see at WWDC 2021. Hardware. For a while now, rumors have circulated about 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro models. Both Pro-level MacBook Pro models will feature a revamped flat-edge design similar to the iPad Pro. The new MacBook Pros are expected to come with physical function keys instead of a touch bar and more ports, including an SD card slot. We have also heard that the new professional level machines will see the return of MagSafe power charging. Model numbers have been spotted to show indication that a cellular model could also be in the new future. Finally, giving the portable professional laptops 5G connectivity. Like the M1 iPad 12.9 inch, the new redesigned MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch could also see mini LED displays as well. In addition, we finally get to see the prosumer version of the M1 chip, the M1X. The upgraded chip offers a 10 core CPU with 8 high performance cores and 2 energy efficient cores, 16 core or 32 core GPU options, and support up to 64 gigs of RAM. With this new chip, users can expect to have highly increased performance, further beating out Intel's top-of-the-line processors. With the limitation of M1 chip, the M1X chip enables users to finally have multiple displays, which was a major complaint of the entry-level Mac M1 systems. On a side note, Apple loves to leave little Easter eggs in its event invitations and promotions. Currently on the WWDC website, there's a wallpaper featuring a glowing Apple logo, are we going to see the iconic illuminated logo on MacBooks again? It is also claimed that Apple's upcoming Mac Mini will be also getting a Pro version with the new M1X chipset. It will introduce a new design for the standalone Mac. 
This would replace the top of the line Intel based Space Gray Mac Mini. The 2021 Mac Mini Pro may feature a new slimmered redesign with a plexiglass like reflective surface on the top in an otherwise aluminum enclosure. The Mac Mini M1 had fewer ports due to the limitation of the first generation Apple Silicon design. As a result, with the M1X chip, Apple will offer a full lineup of ports once again, including four USB 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports, two USB A ports, Ethernet, and HDMI. According to reports, it will use the same magnetic power connector as Apple's M1 iMac. With this redesign, it's rumored that Apple could launch these mini pros with glass-like tops in a range of two-tone colors, similar to its colorful iMac lineup. Speaking of iMacs, we could potentially catch a glimpse of the new M1X iMac Pros, featuring a bigger 30 to 32 inch display. Not much is known, but we could most likely see a similar design to the current M1 iMac, with just a bigger form factor and possible mini LED technology. With Apple's latest laptop and desktop models, users have been wondering if Apple will be making a cheaper consumer alternative to Apple's XDR display. The last Apple Thunderbolt monitor was released back in 2011 and provided many uses for both laptop and desktop machines. Not much is currently known, but people are speculating that the new display could have the same thin design we see in the iMac with 5K resolution, additional Thunderbolt and USB ports, a 1080p camera, bigger speakers, and a MagSafe connector. With the announcement of Apple Music Lossless, we also had rumors of a brand new AirPods 3 coming very soon. AirPods 3 could feature a similar design to the AirPods Pro, featuring a shorter stem and a body that looks more like the AirPods Pro. AirPods 3 have been rumored to come with silicon tips, but other leaks suggest they will come without. They may get active noise cancellation to bring it more in line with the AirPods Pro. The AirPods 3 will likely support spatial audio, and they might be able to play lossless tracks wirelessly. It seems more likely that Apple might design the AirPods 3 to be capable of lossless playback from launch, either via AirPlay or a new wireless protocol that plays nice with Apple's lossless ALAC format. Are there any other upgrades to look forward to? If AirPods 3 take on any significant new features, we anticipate it will come with iOS 14 updates. It's possible that many features of the AirPods Pro can be carried over to the AirPods 3, such as Dolby Atmos support and spatial audio to make listening to music a more immersive experience. Adding automatic switching will update the audio input on your Apple device based on your iCloud account information. Battery of life is everyone's biggest concern with AirPods. With the AirPods Pro, the battery life is rated much lower at 4.5 hours. ANC drains a lot of power. Original and second generation AirPods provide 5 hours of playback on a single charge. There are no reports that suggest these numbers will change regarding the AirPods 3. We expect the battery to last between 4.5 and 5 hours on a single charge. Apple could also be working on an innovative way to increase play times on the AirPods 3 as well. Also, wireless charging may become a reality, particularly now that Apple releases Qi charging based on their latest devices. Among its other features are headphones accommodation, which allows for soft sounds to be amplified and adjusted in frequency. And Hearing Health sends notifications when users are listening to music that's too loud. There may be a pressure relief feature on the AirPods 3. Vents on the earbuds will release the pressure that builds in the ear canal during usage. WWDC is full of jam-packed goodies this year as Apple continues to push forward with its two-year transition into silicon. We're going to see many new OS features across all the devices, as that's what the developer conference mainly covers. But with previous WWDCs, Apple has announced the iMac Pro and Mac Pro. Could we finally see M1X coming this Monday? Stay tuned for our next video as we recap the event. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell for further updates. We're all super excited to see what Apple has in store for us at this event. What do you guys want to hear from the event from Apple? Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.